Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Myung Jin Unsan. Although we do have a little audience participation to start with tonight. So what I would like you to do is turn on your cameras and unmute your microphones. Even though I know it's a train wreck when people have their microphones unmuted and try to answer things uh, in unison, we're going to shoot for it anyway. So you have to answer quickly and they're one word answers. There's only two questions. So answer quickly, one word. Okay. As Buddhists, what do we want? Nothing. <laughs> End of suffering. Oh, three words. <laughs> Come on, what do we want? Awakening. Nirvana. Okay. And when do we want it? Yes, now. <laughs> You know, I'm not taking you guys to the barricades if you can't be a little bit more enthusiastic about this. May Day is coming. Basak is coming. So let's try it one more time. What do we want? Enlightenment. Nirvana. And when do we want it? Now. Now. When? Now. <laughs> it's always that one wise guy. Okay. And different word, again, one answer and uh, answer quickly. Okay. As Buddhists, what do we want to be? Buddhist. Buddha. 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 Okay. I was sure he says. Actually, uh, but I don't think we're going to get there somehow. So, and when do we want it? Now. Okay. So, Eventually. what do we want? Enlightenment. When do we want it? Now. What do we want to be happy? When do we want it? Now. Okay, you can all remute your microphones, please. Especially <laughs> Kevin. Please. <laughs> please unmute your microphone or mute your microphones. Okay, so uh, let me read a wee bit of the Platform Sutra to you. To realize that nothing can be seen, but to retain the concept of invisibility is like the surface of the sun obscured by passing clouds. To realize that nothing is knowable, to, but to uh, retain the concept of unknowability may be likened to a clear sky disfigured by a lightning flash. To let these arbitrary concepts rise spontaneously in your mind indicates that you have misidentified the essence of mind and that you have not yet found the skillful means to realize it. If you realize for one moment that these arbitrary concepts are wrong, your own spiritual light will shine forth permanently. And that's followed up by having heard this Xi Chang at once felt that his mind was enlightened. Thereupon he submitted the following stanza to the patriarch. To allow the concepts of invisibility and unknowability to rise in the mind is to seek bodhi without freeing oneself from the concepts of phenomena. He who is puffed up by the slightest impression, I am now enlightened, is no better than when he was under delusion. Had I not put myself at the feet of the patriarch, I should have been bewildered without knowing the right way to go. And uh, this is from a story that you're probably familiar with. Uh, Zhang Yang then sighed and said, a picture of a cake can't satisfy hunger. He then burned all his books and said, during this lifetime, I won't settle, study the essential doctrine. I'll just become a common mendicant monk, and I won't apply my mind to this anymore. Zhang Qian tearfully left Guishan. He then went traveling and eventually resided at Nanyang, the site of the grave of the natu national teacher Nanyang Huizhong. 
One day, as Jian Gian was scything the grass, a small piece of tile was knocked through the air and struck a stalk of bamboo. Upon hearing the sound of the tile hitting the bamboo, Jian Chang instantly experienced vast enlightenment. So, we got a couple of different things going on here. On the one hand, we've got the bar of enlightenment set really, really high. And on the other hand, we've got the bar of enlightenment set really, really low. Compound this with hearing that we all have Buddha nature. We're all inherently awakened, enlightened, if you like. So, the first question that comes to mind is, what is enlightenment? Do we even know? Can we define it? Again, in some sort of instantaneous way uh, where there's no thought necessarily involved in it? Can that be defined? And the other thing that I tried to get you to answer before was we want to be happy, but can we define that? You know, can we define it in terms that don't involve a negative, like not sad or not wanting anything or something like that? It's like, how do you describe the word happy? And I'll give you a second to think about what an answer to each of those would be. What is enlightenment? What is happy? Would we even know it if we stepped on it like the great Lego, the great cosmic Lego? I think probably not. The bar is set either way too low, like I already am a Buddha, so ergo, I don't have to do a damn thing practice-wise. I think I'm going to go kick that kid on the playground. No matter, I have Buddha nature. Or... We have this lofty thing set where we know kind of that we want this thing we call enlightenment, but we can't quite decide what exactly that is, especially what it is before thought. You know, the stock answer might be, oh, to see my original face. Okay, great. Let's leave the koans out of it and speak to me in your native tongue. What does it mean? How do we know? How do we know we're not? The only way we're going to get to any of these places with any degree of accuracy, as difficult as that may be to uh, determine, is by our practice of looking deeply inward. Now, for some, that might be just sitting on a cushion, staring at a wall. That might be somebody going through a Kungan curriculum. For some, it may be something like, what is it that's asking the question, what is enlightenment? Or what is it that's chanting the name of the Buddha? Or what is it that thinks it's not happy? Take the Huadu approach. Doesn't matter. We have to strike down, we have to pare down, we have to peel back all those layers of concepts and beliefs about phenomena that we invariably have, because that's what we do 
we try and figure stuff out. And usually that's where we start to, you know, do this a little bit there. So before thought, what do we want? When do we want it? What do we want to be? When do we want it? That probably wouldn't be particularly skillful means in a lot of situations, but for those of us who are here uh, in our little virtual meditation room tonight, that uh, should at least point you in a direction. How do we look deeply into these questions? I mean, if one guy can attain awakening because a piece of tile hit a piece of bamboo, and another one attained awakening by having his nose twisted by Matsu rather vociferously, and another one needed to work with his teacher and listen to his teacher and gather the teacher's experience integrating that into his own. One thing that was really telling in that passage from the Platform Sutra uh, was the one about uh, he who is puffed up by the slightest impression, I am now enlightened, is no better than when he was under delusion. We all hear the adage, you know, if you think you're enlightened, you're probably not. If you think about enlightening at all, if you think about enlightening as a thing over there somewhere and not right here, right now, without giving it a second thought, without giving it a first thought, and just work on how may I help you right here, right now, then the word enlightenment means nothing. It's only how may I help you and how may I do it right now, right here, 